the first step is um, grouping and quality control. I am, the one thing we're not addressing today is really <clears throat> the initial step in, in data analyses, of course, is uh, quality control in the context of do you have good scores? For example, um, we have a seminar or webinar already with plant breeding and genomics uh, on that whole topic for Illumina data. You know, for example, uh, missing, you know, are you going to accept markers that have a lot of missing data, samples that have a lot of missing data, things like that. So we're not going to look at that directly today. Uh, so this is, these are things that you need to do prior to this. Um, so MadMapper can group markers. Um, once, we're, once you group the markers, you need to basically separate the groups and, with, and select the markers within a group. And we'll show an example with, uh, in this case, linkage group 8. Uh, that we've done in Pepper. And then we prepare the data and the right files to implement, to put those into record. Um, so the input file for MadMapper looks a lot like a, basically a log file for, all, for most other programs where you have the lines um, basically across the top in the columns. You've got the, mark, you've got the markers in the rows and you have a header basically telling the program what the data is all about. You know, so you can name the file, the uh, type of population, the number of individuals, and the number of markers uh, in this case. So, so these files are quite common uh, for, most, uh, for most mapping programs. And then we just, the genetic data goes in as A's and B's and the dashes are missing data points. So, for people that are just used to Windows, this looks like um, this looks like a foreign language. Uh, but um, the truth is, if you're going to do high genomics and high density mappings and things like that, you're going to have to address it outside of the shell, uh, for the most part. And somebody's going to have to type that online command in the Unix environment for the most part. So the uh, the program can be called up at the uh, at the website that I had in the previous slide. And at the prompt, you just basically type in these, these parameters. And I've highlighted in color what the, each of the options do and, um, and so on. So basically, you call the program up, Python, Mad, 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 Mad Mapper. You tell it what, well, what's your input file, so your load file. In this case, we've called it test data. You name the file that um, you want your output to be put in. So in this case, test data out. And then you have a series of options which you need to put in. So in this case, the first one, point two, um, is, re is the recombination cutoff. So the recombination frequency, maximum recombination frequency that you will allow a marker to be included if it's in part of that group. So a marker has to be within uh, 20 recombination units or point, point two uh, recombination. Uh, for it to be included in a group. Um, MadMapper actually implements another way of looking at recombination through a score that's called bit score. And um, if you go into the README file and explain how that works, but basically uh, the higher the bit score, the lower, the higher the recombination, or the closer, I'm sorry, the lower the recombination, the tighter the, um, the tighter the markers are linked to. So we recommend a score here of 100, but I don't want to get into what a bit score is. 25 in this case, so this uh, this is what's called a data cut. Um, so this is the minimum number of observations um, that the program will use between two markers for them to be included in the group. Okay, so you have to have 25 markers that you have data on um, for that marker to be included in the group, basically. If you have already a, a, a map that you've been using and you have uh, a framework map. Um, you can list the which markers in your data set are considered framework markers. So these these are usually you know high value markers or markers that you know uh, map uh, with good with good confidence and so on. The allele, what we call the allele distortion, 0.33 in this case. So this is the maximum um, allele frequency that you, minor allele frequency that you will allow. Um, for a marker to be included. For in this case, we're doing recombinant inbred lines. Um, you want, you know, 50-50 is, is, is would be the optimum, but we're allowing some leeway up to 0.33 in this case. Um, missing data, 
Um, in this case, this is, so the number 50 here for missing data actually is the number of missing data points as opposed to the percentage of missing data points. So this number, will, of course, will change depending on how large, how, how large your population is. And that, so this is the minimum number or the maximum number of missing data points you're going to allow uh, for a market to be included. The trio analysis is basically what's called triplet analysis. So you can do pairwise analyses for grouping, or you can do triplet analysis uh, for grouping. For first pass, we really want to just do a pairwise analysis. So we just put in no trio. But, um, if you look down here, so your two options are trio or no trio. Um, you want to put no trio also because it's much, much quicker. Because then you're just looking at pairwise comparisons as opposed to um, all possible triplet uh, comparisons. And you can put in a number of double crossovers, a maximum number of double crossovers that you're going to allow um, uh, in the mapping or the grouping process. Um, and we recommend three in this case. So what I do want to say is all this is, is in the README file under the Mad, Mad Mapper. When you click on the link, um, you can download the README file. And it explains all these actually in um, actually more detail than I have even today. The, so you run MadMapper, you basically run this script, you hit enter, and if everything works out and your files are all correct, uh, MadMapper quickly generates 76 files for you. And um, we're not going to go over 76 files. The main one you want to look at um, at this time for grouping is called the tree cluster file. So it's going to give the, automatically puts out the output file name that you that you um, defined in the pre um, in your in your script, so test data out, and then it adds this X tree cluster file, and you can grab that file and you open it, and you can open it in Excel, and it basically is an Excel file in Excel format, and this is what you see. Uh, you see an Excel file with um, a number of headings and a number of a bunch of information. So at the top you see uh, 0 and up to this case the 0.2. So this stops at 0.2 in this case because we've said we're not allowing anything beyond 0.2 if you remember back in our options. So 0.2 recombination. And the, what you see underneath here are basically the number of groups for the markers which are down here in column C. Um, that you have if you have a 0% recombination and, and so on. So what you really want to see is that you get the point 0.2, you want all the markers, so what, if you read this correctly, um, all, the mark, all the markers from say line 26 to line 32 are in group 1 actually down to a 0.18 recombination frequency. That. So as you get tighter you get less, you know, less of these markers all right, and th these are basically group numbers. So if you look at group two, you see the same thing. Group two, these markers are really very tightly linked. All, you know, these are actually all in the same genetic bin if you want to look at it because there's zero recombination up to, you know, you can slide over and you can decide, you know, so at 10% we have, you know, these markers are all together. At 20%, basically all the markers are together. The one thing I want to put out, we don't usually keep, say, this bottom marker here because it's kind of on the edge. It's a point, you know, this marker is part of group 2 at 20%. And sometimes you'll see a number of markers down there. And those, you, you know, you question, uh, you might question further depending on the genetic distance uh, when you look at uh, things later. So what you need to do is basically, so now you've defined groups. You have group 1, group 2, and group 3, and so on with at the 20%. But if you don't like 20%, you can make that cut off anywhere you like. If you say, you know, I really inch, I want to be more um, stringent this time. I'm going to go at 10%. But so you have all that information in front of you. And you can decide um, how you want to make your groups and how you want to break those groups apart. So you see a couple more columns. I'm not going to get into a graph class of node type R. These are really um, just parameters that, that define how well things are, are grouped together. The stars are just uh, really break, breaks in the for the output. Um, in this case, we have framework markers, um, framework markers for group one in this example. So framework, so this marker over here 
number 246 and uh, 126 we've seen before and, and as part of our framework and they were at, in our framework map at position at 12 centimorgans and at 20 centimorgans. So these are basically anchors and references that you can put your new markers towards if you have an anchor map already and that you want to use. And you have your markers, you have a count of the number of A's, the number of B's, and the total number of individuals um, in your population. So, so this is part of the Excel file that you, that you see that's put out in this class file. So the next step that we want, to, the next thing we want to do is really now add the data and make a subset or a loc file, basically an input file for record, um, with the actual genetic data, with the A's and B's um, associated with each of the markers in the groups. All I've done is, is I've slid the file over, I, I've just scanned the file over, um, the class file over, and, and now I see this part. Uh, for it. So these are the markers, um, these are all in linkage group 1, uh, so we've added linkage group 1, we've just um, added this column here uh, in Excel, it's just by putting LG1 and putting it down to where the breakpoint was for linkage group 1. And here are the markers, so now we need to add the data. And so what we do is we ask, we query basically the loc file, our original input file that went into uh, the test data file, that went into um, <coughs> MadMapper initially, so it has all the genetic data, of course, the A's and B's, and you can use a function called VLOOKUP. What VLOOKUP does is, um, and this is a standard function in uh, Excel, so we put this function, we type this function right here, and you just drop, pull the function down, and you have a number of agreed, um, arguments. So he says you look up at the value, um, in this case, so the value is the marker, so Z2, no, you can't see it, depending how big your screen is. So we point to where the marker is, and then we point to basically the Excel file that has all the data. Okay, so this in this case, I have it in sheet 1, um, which looks like here, and I've highlighted the whole range. So I highlight the whole sheet where the data is. So A2, in this case, the B2, um, there's 6,000 markers in this data file, 6,000 lines, 599, and so on. And there's an index column which basically tells VLOOKUP program start over here and you just start at the top, A1. The false in VLOOKUP means I want a perfect match. I only, I only want data exported if, um, I only want the data exported in this file if I have an exact match between this marker name here and the exact marker name in that file. So you hit go. And what that does is really populate all the genetic data to, to the right. So it, ex, it takes this as a reference, grabs the marker name, and basically copies everything for this marker um, that is in the loc file. So what you've done now is you have um, a file that looks like this, which is basically looks like a loc file, but you have now all the markers that are in linkage group 1 in this case, um, and it's genetic data. So you have a new marker, a new file for each linkage group that you have. So basically what we're doing is we use the group data, we've transferred the genetic data, and we're going to save each group, the genetic data for each group into its own file, and make a loc file, basically an input file for a record by group. <clears throat> the next thing you can do is if you want to do a trio analysis, you basically use the same Mad Mapper script as we had in the past, except you change the word trio, and you do it, your input file is by linkage group, in this case linkage group 8. What the trio file does is give you a little tighter grouping, and it gives you a few other statistics like allele distortion. It, it basically puts out a few extra statistics on the markers and it can give out, then you can really pull out a subset of the markers within that group that may have a higher quality um, than normal. We actually don't use the, uh, this uh, trio analysis uh, you know, yeah, in our analyses. 
The second thing we need to do within MadMapper is really export the pairwise matrices, which, um, which we'll use in further analyses, uh, such as check matrix. So, the, so again, we use the same script for MadMapper as we did initially for all the, all the markers, but our input file is now our linkage groups, in this case linkage group H. So it's exactly the same as before, but now we have, um, we did this in Pepper, for example, we have 12 linkage groups. We're going to do this 12 times, once for each linkage group, or if we have more than 12 linkage groups, um, you do it once for every linkage group. And then all you do, put in the exact same parameters and options, but you change, of course, your input file is different, and your output file is different. And that's all you do. So it automatically will generate, when you hit go, the pairwise matrices for it. For each linkage group. And, and so again, so each linkage group input file looks like this when you when you're done. So we've grabbed that file, that plus file, when we for each linkage group, and all we've done is added the header. The, the, the header. So linkage group eight in this case has um, 150 markers instead of the um, 6,000 that we had initially and to do that. Same number of individuals, of course. So the one thing this, that we haven't figured out to do, and if this gets you back, is to rename files into the loc file. So to rename your kit, so you, in Excel you would have saved your file as a text file, but you have to change the ID to .loc. And you can do that easily, just um, go back to your DOS command line um, um, in a PC, and basically go to your directory and just use the word uh, rename, the command rename, R-E-N, and then the file lga.txt, which is the name you've give, given it when you saved it from Excel to lg8loc. So basically, this is this is how you've renamed your file and is your input file for the MadMapper, and also for record. 